Hi, my name is Chris Tillotson, Chief Information Officer for ICE Energy, and I'm back again today with Dr. Marcel Christians, our VP of Research and Development. And we're at the Riverside Idea Lab, and we're talking about the polar bear. And Marcel has put together a prototype that we talked about, we hinted at last time we met in these Tech Talk series. And today I want to find out from Marcel uh, what, what components he changed in the ice bear to reach the temperatures required for this refrigeration and cold chain market. So just to recap on what we said last time, um, the, the project with the polar bear is really to take the ice bear 3D platform and to take its capacity and footprint and apply it to the refrigeration marketplace. And um, to do that, the team really focused mostly on the compressor, the refrigerator, and the expansion valve combo to allow us to reach those temperatures. And then um, from a storage point of view, we had to swap out the phase change material that we use because we can't use the freezing of water anymore and uh, we have to drive to a lower temperature. So that was a key component that we had to change um, on the storage side. At the same time, one of the major uh, things that we've been working on as a team has really been to fine tune the controller um, to make sure that the compressor works well with its expansion valve and the whole system works efficiently. Right, right. So the, the compressor and the refrigerant that's used in the compressor work as a, a pair, and those have to change together. Yes, absolutely. Very good. Well, you hinted at this, and I'd like to understand better for people watching, what are the different bands that uh, the refrigeration markets have to satisfy? What are the temperature bands that we're looking at for the different uh, comfort cooling versus uh, you know deep freeze versus something you might see in a supermarket? Yeah. So um, starting at the higher temperature, we have high temperature compressors and refrigerants and um, the reason they're coupled together is that they're most efficient in those um, temperature ranges. So that's everything in an HVAC and uh, cooling with, uh, comfort cooling um, conditions. Right. Then as you start going a little bit lower, so these are walk-in um, fridges and uh, display cabinets, you start going into medium temperatures and then they have compressor and refrigerants specifically for those and then as you start going into deep freeze situations and cryogenics, you go to refrigeration, uh, low temperature uh, systems. With that, why don't we take a look at the prototype that you put together and you can maybe highlight for us some of the differences, some of the components that you've changed. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, what we see in front of us is a modified ice bear that has become our first polar bear. And um, the, the first thing that immediately stands out is our new phase change material. So this is a material that we've put together um, it's, it's a mix of, uh, it's a proprietary mix of different components that is allowing us to suppress the freezing point uh, down to zero degrees Fahrenheit. In this particular case, because we were doing it for demonstration purposes, we went down to zero F. But based on customer requirements and based on the needs of the major applications that we're going to be serving, whether that's uh, deep freezing uh, display cabinets and medium temperature or um, process cooling, we can change those temperatures um, either to make the freezing point higher or to make the freezing point lower. The great thing about using the Ice Bear 30 as the technology platform is uh, from from our point of view is that everything that's, uh, that the polar bear does is and the way that it operates is covered under existing Ice Energy uh, patent portfolio. We're making improvements and uh, additions to it to that portfolio based on some of the, the designs that we've improved on the polar bear itself, but the core technology is protected by our patent portfolio. But most importantly for our customers particularly is that the polar bear is built on the foundation that already has 35 million operating hours, which means that we know that the polar bear is going to be a reliable, robust product. And for our customers, it's going to be an economical product as well. When we compare and contrast the polar bear, which was delivering cooling at zero Fahrenheit, and we were seeing temperature tank temperatures in the five degrees right at the top, you can see that the Ice Bear 20, which is our residential product, is delivering uh, much closer to 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Marcel, it's great seeing the polar bear and uh, seeing temperatures reach that uh, we would never reach with our Ice Bear. Uh, very exciting. What are the next steps in the process for you and your team? We feel really comfortable and we're very pleased with what the team has done and uh, how the polar bear is working. 
and uh, we've identified three sites uh, local to the Southern California area that um, we're going to be rolling out pilot polar bears and um, the, each of these units is going to be targeting a different kind of cooling. With one of them, which is something I'm particularly excited about, is we're going to be targeting the fermentation, cooling of a fermentation process at a local winery in, um, in the Riverside County. So that's uh, pretty exciting. And then for the other, for the other two uh, pilots, we're going to be looking at uh, doing chilled water, uh, chilled brine cooling application, and also uh, space cooling uh, for a fridge. Excellent. And these are these are applications that just would not be met with the current ice pair product. That's right. That's right. And um, I mean, other than that being, I, I guess, the the biggest milestone that's coming up, we we, we keep improving the control, we keep improving the technology that we're putting in, and it's all towards the commercialization steps in the product development process. Excellent. Thanks, Marcel. We'll look forward to the next meeting and uh, hearing how those prototypes are performing in the field. Yeah, absolutely.